I'm in the Orsay because I, the other day, brought a friend in here and then was showing her how some of the rooms are set up where they actually, like the paintings almost could like speak to each other. One, one kind of goes into the next painting, even if it's different artists. And it's something that you sometimes can really tell curators do. Sometimes it's just, they're just in there and they're all by one artist, but they do actually, there's a lot of thought that goes into where they put each painting. And some rooms, it just really jumps out at you. So I am going to share a couple of those with you right now. So in the Orsay on the south lower side in room number 12 is a few of my favorite paintings, but I also love this room so much because of how each of the paintings actually talk to each other. So this painting right here was done by Manet. It's called Le Balcon, The Balcony, and it is the one of the very first paintings he ever did at Bert Morisot. Bert Morisot is the, would go on to be an incredible impressionist artist, one of the three Grand Dames, and she is seated there. When he saw her, he knew he had to paint her because she had this very uh, Spanish dark look. But this painting um, is really cool because it also has in it the woman standing next to him. Her is uh, Fanny Close. She was a violinist, but her father owned a parasol making company. So she's holding a parasol. And then this gentleman up here is Antoine Guimet, who is a landscape architect. But in the background is the son of Manet's wife, Suzanne Lee Hoff. So you look at this painting and then you go over to this wall. This wall has a painting of Suzanne, Madame Manet at the piano. Suzanne uh, Lee Hoff was brought into the family by his father to teach uh, Edward and Eugène Manet to play the piano. But then his father started an affair with her and his father had syphilis. It could be that her son is or is not Manny's son, but also could be Manny's brother. We don't know, but this one was painted in 1868. Then you go right next to it, you have another one by Manet. And here you see, you have the white billowy white dress again. You have a really beautiful blue and white pot that's here on the balcony. And you go back over to this one and you have the blue and white pot and the white dresses. So this is one of those rooms that the museum curators, you really get a sense of what was in their mind when they did this, and I love it. So that is Suzanne, again, sitting on the couch in this beautiful dress with a necklace on, and then the gentleman in the back is Leon. So that is her son. And when she died, Manny died first, then she died. When, he di when uh, his mother died, she he basically got rid of most uh, all of the paintings that they had because Manet never really took, he never, he maybe, he never was a father, but he never took really any ownership over him. He raised him, helped him, everything, but he would never say if he was the father or not. And then right next to it, we have another Madame. This is Madame Monet. So this is Claude Monet's wife, his first wife, Camille. And she's sitting on a couch, just like Suzanne is and that was done around 1871 in London. And then you have this really beautiful one. This one is done by James T. Soule. And it is a young girl, and she's wearing that beautiful red bolero jacket with that big full skirt looking back. But again, look at the colors in this one. And then you go back and you see the same kind of tealish green. So she's looking at this one with the teal. And you come back over here and you have that kind of light teal wallpaper. And then you go over here and we're kind of come to one of my favorite paintings of all. You have these two paintings by Renoir. This is a young girl with violets and she's got that really beautiful hat on and a polka dot veil over her face. Then you go next door. This is Madame Dera by Renoir as well. Again, hat and veil. She's wearing black. And then you come to one of my very favorite paintings. I'm in the Orsay before it opens, so it's nice and quiet. This one. This is one of my very favorite. I'd have to put in the top five. 
this one of Bert Morisot, painted in 1872. She was wearing black because her father had died and Manet sat her down and painted her. He painted her quite a few times. There's a few more paintings in the Orsay that he did of her up in the Impressionist Gallery. One is from the collection of Etienne Moreau Nelleton. But this one is, she's holding violets. And they changed the location of this. It used to be on the other side where it was really dark, but now it's in this room, which gets this amazing natural light coming in, just filtered a little bit. So you really get to see the violet where it used to be. You could never see the bouquet of violets. But look at her face. Oh, I love this painting so much. I just love Bert Morisot. I love their relationship. They had a really close relationship of like mentor and mentee and they were very close. She ended up marrying his brother. But I love this painting, but you could really see how this wall kind of all goes together. They're all wearing black. There's the, that gal also has violets, black and the hats. Let me stand back so you see it there. Then you go over here with the Tissot and then how that kind of speaks right to this painting. And then you have this wall with the two wives of Monet and Manet, Suzanne and Camille. But this one's really beautiful too. And he was really criticized with this one called the Balcon. He was criticized for using that color. He was criticized for just about everything. Manet pretty much always lived under some sort of controversy. I think he liked it. But his most controversial is just right across the way. And I'll take you over there. So just across the way from the room I just was in is room 14. This is also Manet. This has probably one of his most famous paintings up next to the one that's upstairs. This is Olympia. This was painted for the Salon of 1865. When he submitted it, they completely freaked out because up until then, you only depicted women naked as allegories or biblical or myth mythological. You did not put them in a contemporary setting. Olympia is a, is a word or a name that a lot of times was used for a prostitute. And so she, here she is, she's a prostitute. She's looking right at you, covering up her uh, genitals, but she's looking right at you while her servant, who they later discovered her name was Laura, is bringing the uh, flowers of probably with the next client that's on its way, or maybe it's a client that just left, but there's all sorts of little, uh, icons in here of prostitution. There's the black cat. There is the, her bright bracelet, her necklace, the way that she's looking at you. But it is a stunning painting. This is the model was Victorine Moreau, who also is in Dejeuner sur l'air. And she was sometimes called the cravette because she had red hair and they thought she looked like a shrimp. But in 1865, this was a huge, huge issue. Everybody freaked out about it. And, but there was one person that supported him, and that one person was Emile Zola. And I also love this painting because I love any time there is a painting within a painting, and this one has it, and it also has her in it. So this is Emile Zola. He wrote a pamphlet that you can actually see right here in the painting. That he was basically saying that he was, Manny is an amazing artist. He deserves to be in the Louvre. And so as a thank you, Manny did this painting of Emile Zola. And when this was sent to the Salon in 1868, everybody thought it was just amazing. But the funny thing is, yeah, there she is. She's there. But this time she's looking down at Zola instead of looking out at the viewer. But when this premiered at the Salon, everybody thought it was just great. But when she came to the salon, they thought, no, this is not good. <laughs> but he, that same year, also did Dejeuner sur l'herbe, and let's run upstairs before everybody gets here, and I'll show you. So this might be Manet's most famous piece, Dejeuner sur l'herbe, painted in